It's a question that has spawned countless hours of speculation amongst the communities of the internet, giving birth to fictional films, television series, and novels. And it's one question that the majority of the world's population dreads to imagine. What if Nazi Germany and the Axis power were not defeated during World War II, and Adolf Hitler's dream of a thousand-year Reich came to pass? Through various theories and research, this mini-series will attempt to show you how the world would look if Germany and Hitler became victorious. This is of course a hypothetical view, but we will attempt to show you as much factual material as possible. As always, sit back and enjoy. But as you can be aware, this will not look as comfortable as the society we live in today. With the recent success of the motion picture Darkest Hour, we begin with the uncompromising war prime minister of Great Britain, Winston Churchill, and how his leadership paved the way to victory in Europe against the looming threat of Nazi Germany. But all could have been completely different if an accident he incurred on December the 13th, 1931 in New York proved fatal. Here comes the different lineage of time. Around 10.30 p.m. on December the 13th, Churchill is running late for an appointment with Bernard Baruch, a financial and political advisor to Democratic American presidents. He has not traveled too far when a car going at least 35 miles per hour throws him to the pavement of New York's Fifth Avenue. In reality, Churchill survives with a scalp wound, two cracked ribs, heavy bruising, and pleurisy, causing sharp chest pains when breathing deeply, and over time, causing him to use his cane during times when mobile. In our reality, the accident is fatal. Churchill dies shortly after being admitted to Lenox Hill Hospital that night. Fast forward to the 10th of May, 1940, and with Neville Chamberlain, the current Prime Minister, resigning after a vote of no confidence within the in-power Conservative and opposition parties, it allows a new politician to take the reins of the country, Edward Wood. With no one else having the straightforward determination and leadership skills like that of Winston Churchill, Lord Halifax takes charge of the United Kingdom on the 10th of May 1940. The same day, Germany invades Belgium, the Netherlands and France. Halifax is not a popular choice with the opposition Labour Party, but has the backing of Chamberlain. Chaos ensues within the political landscape of Britain, with no resounding voice to rally troops and public alike against the oncoming Nazi threat. By the 23rd of May 1940, the Nazi German army have reached the English Channel cutting off and leaving the garrisoned British Army, known at the time as the British Expeditionary Force, and the first French army alone and vulnerable at the town of Dunkirk in France. On the 24th of May, instead of inciting the order to halt offensive proceedings, Hitler decides to allow Hermann Göring, the commander of the Luftwaffe, to continue the bombardment against the British and French forces with ground support in tow. Air superiority is now in the hands of the German Luftwaffe, due to the low production of British Royal Air Force units, and German night attacks from the skies onto Dunkirk are becoming commonplace. By the 26th of May, the remaining 338,000 Allied troops at Dunkirk are either wiped out or taken as prisoners of war. This is no longer a battle, this is a massacre that sends horrific shockwaves back to London. Lord Halifax has no alternative but to issue negotiations on a peace treaty between the United Kingdom and Germany on the 28th of May, not long after, he resigns as Prime Minister and sends the British government into permanent dissolution. Hitler has won the Battle of Britain before it has even begun. With no church at the helm, the United Kingdom doesn't continue to fight on, and Hitler decides to continue moving German forces west rather than east towards Russia. Europe is now under the indefinite guise of Nazi rule. Fourth of June 1940, the British monarchy have now gone into exile in Canada. The shores of the United Kingdom are now prone for Nazi forces landing on the coasts of southern England, who have ignored the peace treaty and sovereignty declared by the former Prime Minister Lord Halifax. Operation Sea Lion is declared as resounding success by Hitler, and ground troops begin the march towards London, devastating any minimal resistance forces and asserting the control of the Royal Air Force taking armory and resources for Gowering's Luftwaffe and supporting units. 
This is what they will need for future invasions, especially when heading back towards Russia to begin Operation Barbarossa. For now though, Britain is the jewel in the Nazi crown, as Hitler decides to take residence in Buckingham Palace on the 5th of July 1940, to a staged presentation on film and radio. The Nazi banners are draped down from the rafters of the palace, to a flyover of the Luftwaffe air support units spreading red, white and black ticker tape over the skyline. As a final insult to British resistance, the order to uproot Nelson's column, a focal point statue in London, was confirmed and the new location was set for Berlin, adjacent to the Brandenburg Gate. The House of Lords, the Houses of Parliament are crushed and reduced to rubble to convey a message of ending toxic democracy, sounded by the Nazis. Regional leaders are set up across Britain, known as sector Führers, given the responsibility of controlling districts and aligning borders between cities, towns and villages. This would be the start of the segregation process, rooting out non-desirables and creating order, ready for the exterminations that are already taking root across isolated areas in Poland and rural Germany, away from the knowledge of the public. All men, women and children that do not fit with the Nazis' way of life are transported from their respected sectors to Dublin, Ireland. This would be their last destination, as gargantuan concentration camps have been erected solely for the purpose of what we already know today, the final solution. April 1941, Britain and Ireland, now officially in the hands of Hitler, is a breeding ground for army supplies, military depots, and required living space for deployed German soldiers of both air and ground support. War production is booming, and they are ready to start the process of heading back towards Russia to invade, as Hitler's fondness for Britain begins to fade. A new order devised by the Nazis states that all able-bodied men in Britain, aged between 17 and 45, are to be transferred across continental Europe to be forced to work as slave labourers, 80% of the British population, under the order of Heinrich Himmler, one of the leading members of the Nazi party and Reich leader of the notorious SS, have been executed or taken for human experimentation to continue the ideology of a supreme master race. Further plans are now in place for the invasion efforts against the Soviet Union. 22nd of June 1943 with the now acquired British forces and extra military divisions across Italy, Finland, Romania, Greece and Yugoslavia, Germany now have the capabilities of launching a successful invasion. Codenamed Operation Barbarossa, and with no early Soviet winter to tarnish the ground units travelling en route to Russia, the German offensive via land and air completely takes out the Soviet organisation and control within the first few hours. Moscow is paralysed. Morale of the Red Army shifts to a devastating depression, and the Soviet Union falls by December of the same year. The Kremlin flies the swastika, and Germany's land domination expands tenfold, taking into account that the Middle East oil reserves within Iraq and Iran are now under Nazi control. This will be a huge economical boost for the German war efforts. Seeing this across the Atlantic Ocean, Franklin D. Roosevelt, the President of the United States of America, Already in lone conflict with Japan after the Pearl Harbor attack in December 1941, decides to agree with Germany that America will not get involved with any act of war against the Nazis, and will continue to trade with Hitler's new version of Europe. A peace deal is drawn up, and America continues with no Allied involvement, as they are unable to land and liaise with British forces in the United Kingdom. There is no D-Day, there is no Allied invasion on the beaches of France, there is nothing. By 1945, the majority of Europe is now under control of Nazi Germany, or is governed by the acceptance of Nazi rule. Spain, Portugal and Italy are independent, but comply with trade deals and local government is only answerable to Berlin. The focus of Adolf Hitler's vision is becoming a reality. Millions of people that are not compliant or do not fit with the master race ideology are led away and exterminated across secret correctional facilities. And Berlin is the hub of a successful Reich, with countless parades of military might being shown across the world. It is now, as Neville Chamberlain once said in reality, peace in our time. The 6th and 8th of August 1945 still ends the same, with the USA dropping the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as the two nations continue in conflict. But this is seen as an act of defiance of peace by Hitler, and by September of the same year, he orders work to begin on the Bomben project, 
the war between the US and Imperial Japan ends abruptly, and an armistice between the two countries heralds the beginning of the end of the Second World War, but there is still one final operation left for Hitler to achieve. With the Soviet Union now under his control, there will be an abundance of resources available for the Nazis, thus speeding up the production of their own atomic bomb as America struggles to compete with the finalization of a third nuclear weapon. Within a month of the Hiroshima attack, Germany now has the capabilities of a nuclear weapon inside a modified V-12 rocket, having over 3,800 kilograms of propellant, and a warhead with the ability of holding 1,000 kilograms of weight. Reducing the propellant weight, the modified rocket warhead is fitted with a four-ton nuclear bomb. On the 3rd of September 1945, the modified V-12 rocket is launched from the coast of France and is targeted at London. It detonates in the British capital, covering over 400 square miles, devastating the landmass by fire and radiation. The Nazis have indeed fired upon their own territory, but it sends a chilling warning to all that oppose their rule, which allows the rebelling Middle Eastern territories, the entire continent of Africa, and the remnants of Imperial Japan to fall in line with Adolf Hitler. With the Americas and Canada unable to amass a successful attack by land or by sea into Europe, there is no precedent to launch any form of suitable invasion, and the war ends as Nazi troops converge upon South and Central America, from the African regions, and march through to Canada. The Second World War officially ends on the 27th of December, 1952, with Adolf Hitler proclaiming a resounding victory for his Third Reich, and begins plans to take away European borders expanding Germany's landmass to create a new Germania without the restrictions of a now non-existent United Nations. The death toll of the Second World War far exceeds 300 million souls, but Hitler declares this as the necessary cleansing of the scourge of past evils and would do it all over again to create a pure and just society. This is accepted by a rousing reception of exulting cheers inside and outside of the enormous Volkshow or People's Hall, where Hitler signs the declaration of the end of the war in Berlin. Fast forward to today and the infrastructure is completely different. Nazi rule enforces German dialect to be the native tongue, eradicating the German dictionary completely and invoking anything other than German as a foreign language and frowned upon. Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler's autobiography, is treated as a work of prolific literature and is studied by all school children at an early age. Music lessons only deliver the classical works of composer Wagner. Maths and science lessons demand the continued work of military research, and there is always a moment's pause to stand and pay respect to the German national anthem before and after schooling. There is no mixing of race, color, or creed as by 2019. The world is now a breeding ground of young women forced to be known as multiple mothers, being used to create the perfect Aryan. In Nazi terms, Caucasians of non-Jewish descendant with different partners and free to travel across to neighboring countries is strictly forbidden. You can only enjoy your own homeland as a place of holiday and recreation, which keeps the local economy stable. Sporting events such as the Olympics and football's World Cup are no longer held across different countries. Every four years, the Olympia Stadium, which boasted the 1936 Summer Olympics, is the one and only venue for sport competition. Germany has never toppled and only young men can aspire to become athletes in this new modern era. No longer is there a Jewish or LGBTQ community. Equal rights do not exist and the internet is heavily policed by regional communication bodies governed by the SS. Anything said that is derogatory against the Reich online is investigated and is chargeable by death. Social media only exists in the form of YouTube, which is an idea benchmark for Nazi propaganda to be produced. Phone calls are monitored daily for the trigger words such as resistance, bomb, and terror, with again investigation and potential death if found to be harboring ideas that are marked against the ruling of Nazi Germany. The Holocaust was considered to be an elaborate hoax devised by the enemies of Hitler and the atrocities of what really occurred in the early stages of the Second World War are never unearthed. An online alternative version of Reddit via the small pockets of resistance attempts to broadcast leaked pictures of the atrocities that took place at various concentration camps, including ones in Dublin and Auschwitz. 
but staged conspiracy theory videos are set up to falsely debunk whatever is being produced. The idea of religion, what would be the central belief of the world under the Nazi rule, if any? Hitler deposed certain aspects of Christianity, yet he still believed the acts of the Holocaust were powered through God's will. Religion survives in this new Nazi world, but not without Hitler's authority. Churches, synagogues, and all meeting grounds for prayer are destroyed, bringing about a new form of belief for the public to follow. A natural belief that Adolf Hitler is the reincarnation of God on Earth, with elements that science should be revered instead of superstition. Anyone that is caught practicing a belief that does not conform to the Nazi regime is executed publicly. Behind closed doors, however, exploring the mythical world of the occult continues. Secret work devised and established by Heinrich Himmler on the 1st of July 1935, the Annen Iaba, or Inheritance of the Forefathers, flourishes and grows in research and development, as this was an original group created on direct orders from Adolf Hitler. Such questionable exercises include macabre rituals on willing Germanian soldiers, with the group's sole purpose to explore the powers of mind control and human flight take place, as it's believed by high-ranking Nazi officials, ancient ancestors could possess such magic. The research continues with no resounding success. What holidays or festivals would be put in place? Adolf Hitler's birthday is considered to be more prominent than the celebration of Christmas, so every 20th of April, there is a mass celebration worldwide to honor the Führer. Alcohol is permitted only in Berlin for the day and adjoining weekend, which allows supporters en masse to attend Nazi rallies and cheer for their leader. Germany had no opposition when mounting a challenge for the race to the moon and landed shortly after the war effort in 1962. The first manned trip to Mars was a successful venture in 2011. With no boundaries on technology across countries, the new Axis powers provided Germany with a superior abundance of financing to increase their stronghold, and by 2020, there is promise of supersonic travel to the moon for the public to enjoy. Hitler has been dead for the past 40 years, passing away in 1978 at the age of 89. His funeral was held in state, with the mourning period lasting as long as six months across Berlin. Hitler's body was laid to rest in the Berghof, his Austrian home, but was shortly taken by the Anna Nieba and stored in an underground facility in the German region of Thuringia. Their plan, resurrection of the Führer. So far, tests have been negative. Successes to Hitler's Nazi empire have kept by the morales and obligations of the Reich and democracy is no longer an option. Fear has become paramount with no challenge. It seems that the generations born after the 1940s have long since forgotten a world before the Nazis came to power and this is all they know. No one questions the system, no one dares defy the system. What is so scary about this fictional video is that all of this potentially could have been a stark reality if Winston Churchill never survived the accident in New York. It's amazing to think that a simple accident of crossing the road could have had horrendous implications to the world if proved fatal. We must stress that this is only a series of elaborate theories the what-if moments that we all think about from time to time. Of course, there are resounding factors that could be highlighted. So across more episodes, we will take a look at more underpinning elements, more interesting scenarios that could have changed the course of Earth's history forever. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.